More than 130 people are believed to be still held by Hamas after being kidnapped on October the 7th. Well, with me is Ziv Aboud, girlfriend of Leah Cohen, who was kidnapped when Hamas fighters stormed the Nova Music Festival, and Liran Berman, brother of twins Ziv and Gali, who were taken from their house in southern Israel on October the 7th. Thank you both uh, very much for joining us here on the programme. Ziv, in fact, you yourself were uh, there uh, at the music festival uh, when your boyfriend was taken away? Yes, uh, I was with him uh, actually uh, in the party and with my nephew that murdered in October 7 uh, in this shelter that uh, Elia was kidnapped from. Uh, this is a sad story because may maybe I'm here and I'm strong now for Elia because we really want to bring them home. but. What it was in October 7 was terrified. I'm, I don't know how, I'm, how I am a heel, but uh, our story is, is very, very sad because I was there. I see what they do for, uh, to us. They shot us, they, uh, they throw grenades, nine grenades to our shelter. Uh, they want to murder us. They don't come to fight army against army. They want to murder civilians, people in Israel. It's been 109 days. Um, in fact, there was a, a, a moment of, of hope when we saw some hostages released. <clears throat> I was there in, in uh, Jerusalem and you could feel the, the pain on, on all sides, but, but actually the relief, but also the conflicted feeling that many people had as some of their families came out, but then there were others who were left behind. Um, we were happy uh, <clears throat> for all the families that got their loved one back. But on the other hand, uh, we are still waiting. So it was a bittersweet uh, moment. Uh, and now we are pushing for a second deal. We, we need our loved one here. I need my little brother's uh, home. Ziv needs her partner home. Yeah, your twin brothers yes. uh, have, have been held there. Yesterday we saw um, some hostage families storm the Knesset and, um, you know, scream that those inside, members of the war cabinet, members of the government, uh, members of the Knesset are traitors for leaving these people behind. Is that how you feel? Uh, I can't blame them. Um, and maybe if I was there, I would have done the same. Um, no one can feel what we feel. No one can understand uh, uh, the suffering of, you say, 109 days. Our life stopped on October 7th. So we, we don't count the days. Uh, uh, so I can understand them. Uh, it's frustrating. It's frustrating that we had a deal. Some hostages got back, but our loved ones are still there. I mean, what do you want uh, the government your prime minister to do? Because there's now a lot of criticism around the prime minister, you know, accusations that he's not doing enough, he's not striking a deal. Even though there are deals at, on the table, he's sort of refusing to accept it. Uh, it's not really true uh, because uh, we appreciate uh, the job that he do. Uh, but we need more pressure, not just from uh, Israel government. We need the work pressure because it's not just issues of Israeli. It's not just this. Uh, in uh, October 7, they don't just they don't uh, murder just Jews. Jews. Uh, they murder also Muslims. Uh, in my uh, shelter, it was a Muslim. They say I'm Muslim, and they shot him. So it's not uh, just. Uh, Israeli conflict. It's war conflict. There is um, growing international pressure for a ceasefire, for an end to this conflict, which will result perhaps in the hostage release. Certainly that has been thrown around, but we continue to hear that the Israeli government is saying, well, we don't want a ceasefire. Do you think a ceasefire would result in the release of the hostages? <sighs> yes and no. Yes, we saw that this, the last ceasefire bring back uh, the hostages. But everyone needs to remember that on October 6, there was a ceasefire. We didn't want this, this conflict. We didn't start this conflict. On October 6, there was a ceasefire. And on October 7, more than a thousand terrorists entered Israel in the intent to kill, rape, behead, burn, destroy Israel. 
they didn't come as freedom fighters, they didn't come as, as, as liberators, they came to kill. So we will take a ceasefire now, humanitarian ceasefire, uh, and, and to release our loved ones. But there need to be a, a, an end to, to Hamas uh, govern of, of Gaza because they are, the, the Palestinians are suffering because of Hamas. And yet uh, today we have also seen, alongside the high death toll on the Palestinian side, we've also now seen Israeli soldiers, 24 uh, Israeli soldiers were killed. That, you know, is a total of 291 um, now killed. Um, do you want this war to end, regardless of whether Hamas remains or not? Of course we want the war to end. Um, like I said, we didn't ask for it. We want to live in coexisting with the Palestinians, with the Muslims inside Israel. Uh, we didn't want this war. Every war is terrible. There are a lot of casualties, a lot of civilian casualties, a lot of friends of us who are in the IDF uh, who got killed. So, of course, we want this to end. We, nobody wants to live in conflict. Nobody. Also, also, also uh, me thinks uh, that uh, we want the war to stop. We, we don't want uh, civilians, people uh, will die in both of the sides. Uh, we, don't, we don't ask for this war, but uh, that, that's what happened, you know. So we, we need to fight for our love. And if uh, the, all the hostages will, uh, will, be released. Will, be, will be released, so the war is stop. Yeah. But, you know, I spoke to um, a member of the Knesset yesterday who said the Israeli people are looking for results. Are you satisfied with what you're seeing right now, how things are, are developing? We are not political people. Uh, we are ordinary people who got caught in this craziness. We just want our love word back. Uh, I don't want to be in the shoemakers, uh, in the decision makers' shoes. I know that they don't want to be in my shoes, of course not, but we are not coming from politics. We don't know what's going on into the decision-making. So we are hope that they are doing their best to end this conflict and return our loved ones. What would you like uh, to now see? Obviously, you want to see your, your boyfriend come back and, and for Liran, for his brothers to return. What do I want to return? Can you... Uh, you know, you obviously now just want your loved ones back. Yes. Uh, if you can just tell me a little bit more about your feelings. Uh, it's been 109 days of nightmare. We are living in, in a horror movie that we can't pause or stop or replace the movie. It's a roller coaster of emotion, uh, mostly on the bad side of the emotions. Uh, I, I think Ziv can agree with me, we are tired all the time. We are worried all the time. Um, except, except my feelings about what I uh, have been uh, passed on, on October 7. I need to uh, handle with uh, Elia uh, and what happened to Elia and fight for, uh, for him. And except of this, my family also uh, lose my, 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 I lose my nephew. I see him uh, in front of my eyes murder and I lay with his body for six hours so it's very hard for me to be here but I'm doing the job because it's we, we want support of of the world because we need it and just to pick up on that point I mean you were lying there amongst dead bodies uh, when they took Elia away yes uh, actually after they took Elia they uh, come to the shelter again to finish the job. They take, take a gun and start to uh, shoot everybody. I don't know, like I said before, how I'm here, but uh, I sit with more than 16 bodies in front of me for six hours. Well, we're really grateful that you've uh, joined us. I know it's very difficult uh, and, and a very uh, deeply emotional time. Uh, Ziv Aboud and Liran Berman, thank you both for joining thank us. You thank you very much. Thank you.